So disappointing. Can you imagine he's on vacation in California? They basically take away his his nomination. Nobody's ever seen anything like that before. So he leaves and goes on vacation. He got 14. In all fairness to him, I'm no fan of Sleepy Joe, believe me. But uh, he got 14 million votes. He got no votes, and they took it away. And, uh, you know, they did the same thing. We signed up RFK, who's great. He's a good guy. Got so many votes. But they wouldn't let him compete. They wouldn't let him. If he competed as a Democrat, he would have won. I think he would have won the nomination over. Then I would have had to run against him. I'd rather run against these people. But, uh, you know, it's just one of those things. It's no headline at this point that Trump is not coping well with the undeniable surge the Democrats have been seeing in the polls. In fact, the ratings for the DNC just came out and showed that the DNC had higher ratings than the RNC did each night. Not only that, but Kamala is projected to win more electoral votes than Trump in November, and several Republican stronghold states, including Florida and North Carolina, are now being seen to be in play for the Democrats, and Trump cannot cope with any of it. Instead of addressing the Harris Walls campaign in any kind of meaningful way, he's resorting to his old, tired, bullying tactics. You would think that his dwindling crowd sizes, which he has no doubt noticed, would be an indication to him that he should shift his strategies, but his ego is so gigantic that he apparently doesn't think he should have to. Either that or he is simply incapable of doing so. It's not as if anybody cares about crowd sizes or anything. So. <laughs> For a man who values loyalty above all, he is now seeing how many of his supporters are truly loyal to him and his cause, and it's far less than he would have imagined. But I mentioned his ego. Both his colleagues and critics have referred to him in the past as a narcissist, whether colloquially or diagnosably. But Trump himself does little to dispel concerns over his larger-than-life self-image or maybe his delusional self-image. Sort of like a hot guy. I was hot as a pistol. <laughs> I think I was hotter than I am now and I became president, okay? I don't know. I said to somebody, was I hotter before or hotter now? I don't know. Who the hell knows? Who the hell knows? Who the hell cares, right? A narcissist is nothing if not incredibly insecure, and it's simply not safe to have someone as insecure and as desperate for validation as Trump is in a position of power, let alone the seat of the highest power in the country, arguably the world. Here he is rambling about Kamala Harris's Time magazine cover, where he claims that they tried to get a good picture of her and they just couldn't. I mean, Time magazine, think of this. Time magazine doesn't have a picture of her. They have this unbelievable artist drawing her. And I said, is that Sophia Loren? I couldn't. <laughs> Who might that be? Is that Elizabeth Taylor? They say she was a beautiful woman. Who is it? It's so beautiful. Drawing. It's a drawing. They took a lot of pictures. It didn't work out, so they hired a sketch artist. I said, I'm sure, oh, they must be celebrating the great life and times of the magnificently beautiful Sophia Lauren. By the way, that wasn't the first or only time Harris has been on the cover of Time magazine. And that's also a funny comment coming from a guy who sold AI-generated images of himself as NFTs. These cards show me dancing and even me holding some bitcoins. Hashtag never forget. Also, News Nation recently reported the polling from Voters of Tomorrow, and it showed Harris leading Trump with young voters by an absolutely incredible 32 points. But while Trump is determined not to come across as weak or scared or even worried in the slightest about his own presidential campaign, he seems to be running scared. For one, he's been sitting for interviews with podcasters and social media personalities, people who aren't likely to challenge him on anything he says or does, especially now that even Fox News seems bored of him. But now, after finally agreeing to debate Kamala Harris on ABC, he's threatening to back out again. Over the weekend, Trump posted this on Truth Social. He said, I watched ABC fake news this morning and I asked, why would I do the debate against Kamala Harris on that network? It's the will he, won't he, we're all glued to our seats, Donald. Look, if he shows up, he's going to get beaten and beaten badly by Harris. Perhaps his campaign will never recover from it. If he doesn't show up, 
His campaign will never recover from it. The Harris campaign will rightfully claim that Trump was afraid to debate Kamala Harris, which is a particularly damaging insult against a man whose entire brand is machismo and toxic masculinity. He'll attempt to claim that the debate doesn't matter and that the whole thing would have been rigged anyway, blah, blah, blah. We've all heard it before. The whole world is against Trump, who is such a nice guy that he deserves only the nicest things like the presidency. Meanwhile, Harris wants hot mics at the debate, which is brilliant. Typically, especially with debates involving Trump, the moderators want to mute the mic of the person not talking in order to avoid chaos and confusion on the debate stage. And I've always found that weird because these are grown people who think that they are mentally, emotionally, and intellectually fit enough to be the president of the United States, but they can't even be trusted to follow simple debate protocol. This is the same debate protocol that would get high school debate teams penalized if not disqualified for not complying with. But no, Trump cannot be trusted to behave like an adult, so they give him bumpers. They mute his mic. Harris is now saying, leave the mic on. Let's see how Trump really chooses to conduct himself. Rather, let's see how Trump can't help but conduct himself. Let's see how little control he has over his own behavior. Brian Fallon, the Harris campaign's senior communications advisor, told Playbook that... Our understanding is that Trump's handlers prefer the muted microphone because they don't think their candidate can act presidential for 90 minutes on his own. We suspect Trump's team has not even told their boss about this dispute because it would be too embarrassing to admit they don't think he can handle himself against Vice President Harris without the benefit of a mute button. I will admit for someone who typically doesn't watch political debates unless I really have to, I am looking forward to this one. The running narrative is that Trump is sophomoric and incapable of managing himself or his own emotions. He's pushing 80 years old and he's still behaving this way. He's not going to suddenly change or be better. Rather than getting better, perhaps acquiring more wisdom in his old age, he seems to be regressing on every level. His decline is only more apparent when juxtaposed against Kamala Harris and Tim Walls. Harris is poised, thoughtful, and well-spoken. Walls is highly respected and loved amongst his family, his peers, and his constituents. And unlike Trump, he is the epitome of a man who knows exactly who he is. Trump can't cope with any of it. At least it's fun to watch. All right, that's it for me. If you got anything out of this, please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more.